Hey YouTube, it's been a while since we've had video of this engine. This is my 8 horse Bessemer. It's a two stroke engine made sometime in the 20s. It's uh, originally powered by pro uh, sorry natural gas, but I've got something to show you. This is the liquid fuel injector mixer, uh, specifically made by Bessemer for this engine to allow it to run on gasoline or kerosene or any other kind of light um, uh, motor fuels. So I, I picked this up recently. It was actually a fellow, another engine collector, got in contact with me. Knew I was uh, in the market for one. And um, we made a deal and it came a few weeks ago. I've uh, made a fuel tank for it. That's actually uh, an old helium bottle for pumping up balloons or something like that. But uh, I've added a filler plug and uh, a a uh, pickup tube with a check valve at the bottom of it, uh, copper line to feed the mixer. Bessemer actually calls this the universal fuel feeder. It's a neat little device. It's pretty ingenious. It has no venturi or throttle butterfly. It pretty much just consists of a needle valve for a uh, fuel mixture, a little nozzle that passes into the uh, intake port uh, about an, uh, an inch beyond uh, the flange here with the nozzle at the end and it just shoots fuel uh, into the intake stream into the uh, uh, combustion chamber or the cylinder. Uh, let me give a little quick description on how this works. The, uh, there's a cork float that's missing right now. It, uh, this is what came with it. Um, it was originally, well when I got it, it was just a piece of cork and I just uh, coated it with red coat. But um, this here is not a, uh, did not work well. Um, it's homemade uh, float, it's not square, you can see. And I had problems with this um, because of its shape and the fact that uh, the hole is not centered. Uh, it would wedge itself against the sidewall of the bowl here and allow the engine to flood. And uh, that's no good. But it's a neat setup. It uses the, uh, pressure buildup and the vacuum in the crankcase to actually pull fuel up from the fuel tank and it works quite well. I was uh, actually impressed with how, how much fuel it'll actually move. Um, but I'll go into that a little bit more later. But right now I'm working on making a new float. So I'll go back here and show you what I'm doing. I bought this block of cork. This is actually cork specifically uh, made for carving. It's made for really decoys and things like that, but it's really neat to work with. It's easy to work with. And here's what I'm working on. This is going to be the new float for it. It's, it's pretty fine grain cork, so it, it carves and shapes very easily. But uh, it's, it's more round than this, for one thing. And uh, another another issue this, this piece had was uh, it's just not thick enough. This is a, a little mandrel or thimble that goes through the center of the float, uh, which the uh, there's a pin in the mixer or the little uh, feeder that this mounts on. But I'm working on shaping this right now. It uh, it shapes very well. I mean, let me it, on on a uh, on a bench grinder with a with a uh, coarse wheel on it at a high speed. It cuts well with a hacksaw. I just used a hacksaw blade to cut it, and then a knife just to cut the big pieces off works pretty well just to kind of saw it uh, without removing a lot of material like the hacksaw does and then a bench grinder you can really cleans it up smoothly and then uh, just some sandpaper on the uh, flat surfaces so let me uh, get back to you when I have this finished alright well it's been a few hours and uh, this is the finished product my new uh, float I've uh, coated it with the red coat uh, fuel tank sealer and it started to dry. It's pretty it's it's pretty well almost dry. So that's it compared to what, what came with the uh, with the mixer or feeder, fuel feeder. So this was my first attempt and I got a little carried away and the uh, bench grinder took a bite out of the first one, so I had to start again. But I've round, rounded the corners of it just so it hopefully that'll prevent it from wedging itself in the bowl. So, let me uh, take it out to the engine. Yeah, pretty 
much just going to sit right on that little pin there. A little bit hard to do with one hand. Get that pin centered. There it, is. there it goes. Press it down. This little clip right here locates in a notch on that pin, that upright pin. It's a little difficult. Yeah, get to that off camera, off camera when I have two hands. So, but here's a uh, an interesting little piece of literature. This is uh, it's not really a manual for the Bessemer engines. It's more like an information book. It doesn't really have any operating instructions. Just you know, basic information on the engine. And there's a really nice cross section of this uh, fuel feeder. Let's see, it's uh, the Bessemer Universal Fuel Feeding Device. So there's the float right here that I just made. You can see there's a check valve on the fuel inlet pipe and that upright uh, needle, which is that right there, has a little ball on the end of it. So and that's attached to the float. So when the float raises, that ball raises up to a seat and prevents any more fuel from going into the bowl. This is the nozzle which is inside the cylinder here past the flange. And uh, of course the needle valve. There's the jet right there. Well, the adjustment, the, the needle valve and seat. So pretty much uh, when a vacuum is built up or a vacuum is pulled inside the uh, crankcase from the piston traveling up in, on compression stroke, uh, you know, the atmospheric pressure from the tank will force fuel up through the fuel line and into the bowl. Then uh, when the piston is on its downstroke, compressing the air in the crankcase, uh, obviously this is gonna, this little ball here, the, the check valve is going to close. And it's going to hold the fuel in the bowl. And uh, there's air passages up here from the crankcase. Go up through here and down to these ports. Uh, they're in the you can see those holes right here in the lid, and uh, builds up pressure in the feeder, and uh, that the, over a large surface area of fuel, and that pressure over that large surface area forces fuel out the nozzle, even though the nozzle is at you know the outlet of the nozzle is at crankcase pressure, the same as the inside of the bowl here, just the, the surface area of fuel acts to force the fuel out of the nozzle. So that's pretty much how it works, right Right as the, uh, you know, the, the piston is uncovering the intake port. So it's a pretty neat device and uh, it worked very well uh, the short time that I had the engine running uh, before it started to flood. So hopefully with, the, uh, with this um, you know, correct uh, float it should operate. So I was going to go ahead and do that now but it started to snow I don't know if you can see, but uh, this is going to be a project for another day. Plus, I should probably give uh, at least 24 hours for this red coat to set up. It's still a little bit tacky, but uh, I'll get back to this engine uh, shortly, and uh, you can see it run again. All right, thanks for watching.